Okay, thank you, Andy. <clears throat> well, welcome everybody. Um, I would, I am very excited to share with everyone um, the new platform that we'll be developing all of our applications on going forward. It's a, it's an exciting step forward for PureSense, and uh, I hope you all uh, share the excitement with us. Um, I'm just going to give a quick introduction uh, first, and then we'll get into the application and. Um, if at any time, like Andy said, if anybody has any questions, uh, just get them in the chat box and let me know. I'll try to stop um, every now and then and ask for questions. So let's get started. Uh, content for today, we're going to do an introduction. I'm going to describe a little bit our transition process from our existing um, IM desktop application to the IM web application uh, because it is a process. It's not a one-time cutover. Um, I'll describe a little bit about the, the IAM solutions. Uh, we'll have a demo of IAM on the web. And then we'll describe a little bit how you'll still interact um, for the time being with IAM Desktop. Um, and then talk about some next steps. So an introduction to IAM on the web. <clears throat> um, we, uh, our, our irrigation manager project product was built seven years ago. That it was begun seven years ago. And at that time, the web technology wasn't um, advanced enough for us to build all the features that we wanted to build into our application. So we went with a desktop version of the application, which uh, I believe you all are familiar with. Um, that application has some limitations. Um, it has some performance problems, especially once you get out to rural areas with uh, not great internet connections. Um, it does require some downloads, and sometimes some folks have tr trouble um, getting the application installed. So about a year ago, we started, probably a little more, we started looking at different um, methods for delivering our applications, and clearly the, the web, a web-based application was the way to go. Um, so here's a little slide on why the web. Uh, the web is accessible from anywhere. Um, this application you can get to from your PC. You can get to it from a Mac, um, which is a, a added benefit. We do have a lot of Mac users that um, couldn't use the, the IM desktop application previously. Um, you can get to it from tablet, you know, iPad, um, and smartphones. And it's all the same application. You'll be you can access the exact same application from every one of these devices. Um, in the future, we will have. Uh, we have the ability now um, to reformat the application based on what device you're logging in as. Um, that feature isn't enabled right now. It needs a little bit more development, but fairly soon you'll be able to browse to it from your smartphone, and it will be formatted differently um, to fit your smartphone screen. Um, I get on it uh, all the time on my, um, on my iPhone. Um, the application looks great. It works really well uh, from an iPhone and, and small screen devices. I have a quick um, question. I did see, the, I did see that question. Um, yeah. And it can any iPad can access this application. As long as you have a browser, uh, a modern browser, we should say, um, you can access and use the uh, IAM web application. The other thing that uh, I am for the web enables us to do is to um, upgrade very quickly. Um, it allows us to continuously release new features. Um, we'll be working on features all the time. Uh, we're currently looking at uh, quarterly releases, um, but as small incremental fixes come up, um, it's much simpler for us to, to push those out um, to serve our customers better. Um, and the platform is built for growth. It, it really is. Um, the intention behind the, the work we've been doing is so that we can add to it very quickly. Um, we have a feature set that's been requested by customers and uh, internal staff that is somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 220 features. Uh, and some of those are quite large. So we know we have a lot of work to do to deliver value um, based on the data that we're collecting. Um, we can really do a lot of a lot more analytics and um, uh, number crunching and uh, advanced tools than we're doing now, um, and this product allows us to deliver those much more quickly. The other thing it allows us to do, you see that levels of service available. Um, we've we've often gotten comments uh, in the past that 
the IM desktop application was great, except it had too much in it. Um, people liked the application, but they felt like they were overwhelmed by uh, the abundance of features, and some features weren't clearly understood or explained in the application. So the web application also allows us to offer a basic version of the application that has you know, your reading charts and everything you, you use every day. And then for more advanced users, we can offer different packages of pro, pro, advanced, et cetera. So for the transition process, um, we, we didn't have, we don't have the time to um, build all of the new features in IAM, all of the features from IAM Desktop into IAM Web and then do one massive cutover of all of our customers. We also didn't think that would serve our customer base very well because that would be a lot of new learning that we're forcing on people on our own time. So what we've decided to do is, is run really a, a fairly long transition process. Um, and during this process, we will uh, we'll be mi migrating features from uh, IAM Desktop to IAM Web. Those features will remain the same in IAM Desktop. We're actually not planning to release any new versions of IAM Desktop. Um, but we will start migrating features over to IAM Web and improving them as we move them. Um, any new features that PureSense works on will be added to IAM Web only. Um, we, at this point, we don't plan on adding new functionality to the IAM Desktop application. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we're planning on releases each quarter with additional functionality. Um, once we're feature complete from uh, of all of the features from IAM Desktop into IAM Web, um, and we've gotten people to you know start their transitions, etc., and we'll have our um, uh, account management team work with all of our customers on that transition, by the way. Um, at that point, you'll be able to select what service level you, you'd like to use, basic or pro, or um, I, I believe we we're talking about a, a pro plus at some point. Um, at that point, we will sunset IM Desktop, and what sunset means is no longer available. It's not a supported product anymore. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, both IM Web and IM Desktop are available. Um, you can choose to use whichever one you'd like. Um, you'll see throughout this demonstration that there are some features that are still only available in IAM Desktop. They have not been transitioned to IAM Web yet. And the other thing that, that we should really note is a lot of the features that have been developed in IAM Web, um, we've ported the data over from IAM Desktop to the IAM Web database. But in IAM Web, they're currently read-only. Um, IAM Desktop is the place to do your editing of all your data. Um, and that will remain the case until we do the sunset of IAM Desktop. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, just a quick rundown of, of what the IAM solutions are. Um, the IAM product really contains, is the carrier for all of our different solutions that allow our growers, uh, all the, gives all the, our growers the tools they need to go from pump to root, to manage their water from pump to root. So there's the scheduling application that we released oh, months ago. Um, that's a free application and anyone can get to it. Um, it's also available f with your IM data now, so you can schedule your uh, the fields that you have entered in IM. You can use the new scheduling product uh, for those fields. IM Control, which is our pump uh, pump monitoring control application. IM Flow, which is uh, managing and monitoring flow data from across the farm. And IM Field, which is what most of you are familiar with. It's where you're collecting real-time data from your soil moisture probes, from your weather stations, et cetera. Um, this is sort of a, an estimated uh, timeline for our migration plan. Um, as you can see, we're building features into the IAM web application um, over the next four quarters, and it looks like um, currently that we'll be sunsetting IM desktop sometime in Q3 of uh, 2014. 
So having said all that, um, if anybody has any questions, now would be a good time to ask them before I dive into the application and we really start uh, looking at the features and playing with the app. Uh, sure, yeah, we'll, we will send out a copy of these, uh, the, the deck, absolutely. Does anybody have any other questions? Your mics are all off of mute now, it looks like. Yeah, everyone's great. Okay, I'll go ahead and get back started. So let's um, move off of the presentation and into I Am Desktop. If this screen is too large or small for anybody, uh, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to run it in full screen like this. So the first thing um, that you'll need to do is know what the web address is. And it really is as simple as typing in apps.puresense.com. If I um, just go to that web address in my browser here, it will take you to the login screen. Um, at the login screen, you, you can use your existing IM username and password. Um, they, they have been ported over, so um, just use what you're already familiar with. And go ahead and log in. If I can remember my password. And this is your landing page. So we, we did take a lot of feedback um, from growers that they wanted new applications to look as much like existing IM desktop as possible so there wouldn't be a, a large learning curve. Uh, we tried to stick with that theme as much as we could. Um, and to that end, you see some very familiar things here. You have a tree with your data on it, your, your navigation tree. And then you have a map down here with familiar icons. Um, and then what's new is some things over here on the, the right-hand side, which is our info pages, and we'll talk about those a little later. Um, with this tree, we did uh, make some changes, some, some um, new features here. Uh, we have a filter, uh, filter on the application, so you can filter this tree any way you want. As you can see, I have uh, several layers of groups here. Uh, my top level group, which is my customer, and then I have a California group and a North, Northern California group. Um, you can click on any one of these things and you see your map zooms to the level that you, were, that you clicked on. Um, and every, every item in this tree has its own um, info page, uh, which we, again, we'll talk about a little later. Um, within the tree, you can see I have this field here. Uh, you can click on your field and get information about the field. Click on any one of your, uh, your probes out in the field um, and you see their info pages. Um, we have this filter up here now, so if you only, say, want to see your fields, I only want to reference field information right now, it makes it easier to navigate around. Um, and my favorite new feature is uh, the search feature. If I know I'm looking for SMP4, it narrows the fil it filters the, the tree down so I can get to exactly what I'm going for. This is very helpful for our are larger growers that have hundreds of, of, of sites um, and they don't want to necessarily drag and navigate through their tree to figure out, find where they're going. Um, the other familiar feature that you'll, you'll notice is this map application, this map in the application. Um, it's, it functions very much like the IM desktop map. Um, you can see here it's got, uh, it's embedded within the navigation side um, we can also make the application look much like uh, existing IM desktop by clicking on this toggle map position button right here. Um, this will transition the map to look more like what you're used to. Uh, this is a setting that once you change it, it will remain. So if you like this view, uh, you can live in this view anytime you get into the application. If you like it the other way and you like more, um, if you're more data centric, for example, you can uh, just click on the button again to swap it back. Um, one, a couple interesting things on the map, um, just like in the IM web application, you can turn on and off different layers, um, so you can turn off your fields and, and sets, and so it helps you, your eye go to what you're looking for. Um, it actually is 
easier to see on a larger level if I am looking at, say, California South, and I really um, want to focus down here, but I only want to see information about my fields, for example. You can just go ahead and turn off everything else. That's interesting. And that hover stayed until I brought the icon back. Um, so, yeah, throughout this demo, you may, if you see little things like that, I'm, I'm making notes of those. Uh, interesting little added feature. Um, the, other, the other thing uh, that's also familiar from IM Desktop with this uh, map application is the hover. Um, this is the basics of the, the hover in IM Desktop application. You just drag your mouse over any of your sites and you can see latest readings and a seven-day chart uh, of the latest readings as well. And it, that, that's not all the, clearly not all of the readings on the chart. It's your selected soil moisture um, uh, sensor or for, say for example this flow meter site here um, there is no soil moisture, so it goes to uh, the default um, for the site. Let's see. Uh, let's move on, say, to actually, uh, I did want to talk about um, some some of the things, uh, what the icons mean, I, I guess we should say. Um, so you see that the icons look fairly familiar. I think most people are, are familiar with what these uh, icons mean um, as far as the soil moisture probe icons. There are some additional icons like this uh, pressure switch here, or sorry, this flow meter. Um, and if you are in the application and you're wondering what an icon means, you can go ahead and the show legend button over there on the top, right? And this is a good uh, rundown of what all of the icons mean throughout the application. So you can see here, um, an asset icon of a soil moisture probe, this is what a red icon means. Um, you know, if you see one with a question mark, you know that means a soil moisture probe with no bounds set. And you can see things like this clearly denotes a flow meter. And then the background of the icons, um, we've actually made some changes to to make them more useful. So if you see a, a, a gray outline background, that means you're, you're uh, your status data is still loading. It hasn't. The application hasn't finished loading it yet. And then you have some various online icons. Um, and online with water flowing, this one's very handy. If you um, go to the snapshot shot of your farms, any uh, any site where you have water running. So whether it's a uh, whether it's a pressure switch that's actually um, seeing pressure, or whether it's a pump that's turned on or uh, uh, basically any water running anywhere in the pump, you're going to see this blue background on your site. And then you have uh, offline if there's a problem with one of the sites, etc. So that's really handy to have up in the top right corner. Um, another nice new handy thing is the, uh, the zoom back to the customer level. Nice handy button here to just go back to your whole overview. Um, if you have zoomed in, say, to look at something, you know, detailed, um, you can click this and zoom back to the, the whole farm. I uh, just want to check my notes here. Uh, the other uh, little new feature we have, uh, clicking anywhere in the, in the map will um, change your view on the tree. So if you notice, I click around here in the map, it does go ahead and select that site in the tree and loads the info page for the site. Um, so let's talk about info pages a little bit. Actually, before I move on, does anybody have any questions? Do we want to unmute and see if there are questions? Okay. So let's talk about info pages for a little bit. Um, and info pages to me are a really powerful new idea for PeerSense. Um, it's where we're going to be able to build uh, a lot of new functionality um, and have it be readily accessible for folks. 
So as I mentioned, any, anything you click on in the tree over here on the left, you're going to see, um, if you're in this view, you're going to see your info page on the right-hand side. Again, if you flip your map back and forth, you'll see your info page down uh, to the left below the navigation. And on these info pages will be, um, we'd like to, the, the initial concept as we started talking about it was it's the Facebook for the farm. It's every one of these um, assets has its own Facebook page. It's where you'll go um, eventually as we start building features out. It's where you'll go to put notes. It's where you'll go to um, look at charts for the, the asset that you're looking at. It's where you'll go for everything you need to know about this particular asset. And what we've built in is uh, roll-up information. So I'm at the customer level here, and what this info page says for the customer is it's an overview for the entire customer. You can see um, we have the, the same chart that you see in the hover for um, the different assets. And if you, you notice, there's this little next button over here. So what we're showing you is the default chart for every one of the sites within the customer. And if I go to another info page, um, you'll see that same, same chart UI, but only for the things that are underneath that group. So California has 11 things in it. This north group has just two. Um, so you see that the charts change for each one of those. And you can change these from a seven-day chart to a one-month chart to a three-month chart. And that, that setting will uh, remain if you decide you like seven day better uh, for this view. Uh, and that'll, that setting will remain for you after you select it. Um, it has, we also have, most of our info pages have some overview things. Um, you can see, you can have a look at you know, who, uh, what your uh, associates are for the customer. Um, you can invite and send people invites to our application as well. Um, that's a nice new feature for um, if you have uh, additional folks at the farm who you want to have access to the application, you can invite them yourself. You don't need to involve PeerSense to do that. Um, this is where you can maintain fields. Um, has a number of monitored sites. And we give you some links to learning more about how you can uh, have pumps, monitor and controlled, et cetera. And then we have our free scheduling tool. Um, if you decide you want to look at the free scheduling tool at this level, you'll see all of your fields and sets. Um, if you navigate farther down into the application and look at the scheduling tool, you'll see uh, fields and sets only for that particular group. Uh, the scheduling application, uh, I, I didn't plan to go into uh, in great detail in this demo because we've, I believe we've talked to most of you about it. Um, if anybody wants to get into the scheduler in detail, please let me know uh, and I can go ahead and, and dive into it. Um, so from the info page, uh, the, the thing most people are interested in um, and we got the feedback from most of our customers that their primary use of our application is charting uh, and reporting. So the, the, the easiest thing that you can see from here is you can get to any of your charts very easily. You have um, you know, your, your summary of all the charts for a field, for example. And then if you want to see, um, okay, Nick, no problem. I'll, I'll get into the scheduler too. Uh, if you want to see the full chart for any one of your sites, yeah, there's this view button here. And clicking view brings up a chart that is as much like our existing charts as we could make them. Uh, we got the feedback that people really like the charts. Um, so we tried to stick with that uh, design. And you'll see we have a similar um, list of um, sites, assets here that you can select. You can go to whichever one without going back to the main application. You can just select between your um, your sites. Your chart views will have come across if you have if you've created custom chart views in the IM desktop application. Those will have come across. Um, so those will be set up here. If you set a default um, chart view for yourself, that will also come across. So when you open a site, you'll get that chart view. 
And working with this chart is much like our existing IM desktop chart. You can remove sensors as you need to, um, refresh the chart, and it will come up with uh, the new chart for you. You can change the date range. Um, right now we have just some canned date ranges for you. Um, some advanced features will be building in, uh, you know, custom dates, etc. And then we made it really easy to do the scale to bounds. We got a lot of feedback that this was something people really like to see, the scaling to bounds. So what that means is it will bring your upper and lower boundaries into view for solar moisture probes, actually for any sensor. Um, so you can really see, um, you can really see where you are in between your bounds as opposed to, you know, the, the zoomed in view where you don't really know where this lower bound is for, say, this 60-inch uh, uh, sensor. Um, you can also have a look at uh, some details about any of the sensors. Um, right now, it's just got your bounds in here. Just by hovering over, if you scroll down, you'll notice there's this little drop-down widget guy there. You just click on that, and it will show uh, further information. I imagine we'll be building more um, details into here and allowing edit in the long run. Um, right now, these are, uh, as I mentioned previously, when we bring sync data across from IM Desktop to IM Web, um, it's read only in IM Web. So you can see throughout the application, you'll see these little locks. And that's what that's uh, telling you is that this is data from IM Desktop. So it's read only in the IM Web view. If you wanted to change these boundaries, you would need to do it in IM Desktop, and that, that change will be synced across to this application. Um, a couple of other features in the chart. Um, you can very easily print it by clicking Print Chart. Um, it gives you your chart information, puts the title at the top, and you can print away. Uh, and I just closed my chart, didn't I? And then the other thing that's uh, very handy is, um, is downloading the data. So you just click on the download data application. It, it sends you a CSV file, which you can open in any text editor or Excel. And as you can see, here's your, the data that's behind the chart that you can do anything you'd like with. Does anybody have questions on the chart? Okay, let me just check my notes and make sure I've gotten through all of my chart features I think I have. Um, so that's the, the basics of the application. Um, let me get into the scheduler a little bit. If this is the first time you, you folks have seen the scheduler, um, it, it's a, an evolution of, our, of the scheduler in our uh, IM desktop application. Uh, the IM desktop scheduler did not get a whole lot of use. It was not a very successful feature. Um, people found it very clunky to work with. So the idea that we were going with with this scheduler was to make it as simple as possible. Uh, we tried to make it as Excel-like as we could because that's an interface people are familiar with going and typing data into. Um, so let me dig into it a little bit. As you can see, uh, we don't have any schedule for this demo customer uh, currently. So just click anywhere on the scheduler, and it'll bring up the scheduling application. And this is basic. This is the the basic version of the scheduler. Um, upcoming releases will add features to this. Um, right now, uh, you can you're limited to only scheduling hours for a day. Uh, we don't currently do start stop times, uh, but that feature will be coming in subsequent releases. Um, we're also talking about very early on uh, and uh, a subsequent release to do, um, you know, uh, ET um, suggestions for, you know, hours, etc. So that those features will be coming. But right now, this is this is where we are. It's a it's a wonderful little easy to use application. Um, if I want to schedule a field, I click on the day I want to schedule, eight hours. Um, I can hit the arrows. Um, just like any Excel-like application um, to go put hours anywhere I'd like. Um, 
and it will record those as a schedule. When you're done with your schedule, um, you can just save and close it, which, which won't send any information out to anybody. And as you can see, we have a field scheduled for today. Or um, what we found very helpful is you can save the schedule and share it with folks. Um, and actually, let me take a step back here because I don't currently have any managers of fields. So one thing I should mention uh, on the field info page, for example, you can see we have this overview and I have zero managers. The idea behind this manager concept is that we want you to be able to say, of my users of the application, who's responsible for different fields with, with, within my organization? And it will that will flow through to things like the scheduler, um, eventually security will be wrapped around that. Um, it'll allow you to do uh, quite a few things. So let me go ahead and define some managers for my fields. Um, as you can see, I've clicked on the customer level again, and this will allow me to manage my managers for uh, the entire customer. So if I click on managers, um, this employee has uh, manages, I'll say, these four, and this manager manages these other four. Go ahead and assign that, save it, and now I have some managers for all my fields. And if I want to go schedule now, I have, here's my schedule that I entered previously. If I save and share it, what this is going to do is it's going to send that schedule to my managers. Um, right now, both of these managers are myself, so if I send this to myself, I'll get two emails with the schedule in them. Um, so to show you what that looks like, I'll go ahead and, and print it for the fields that each one of these individuals manage. And what this is going to do when I say go is it's going to run the, the print job for you, and then you'll have a PDF document that you can look at. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. So this is what these managers would have gotten in, in their mail, is here's your schedule for this week. Um, and each one of these individual managers would have gotten their own schedule for the fields that they manage. As you can see, here's the Ryan Ryan demo, and he has he's the manager for those four fields. And then Ryan demo two is the manager for those four fields, and they each got their own schedule. Um, we we thought that would be a very easy way for you to communicate with your um, irrigators to let them know when they should be managing, uh, when they should be irrigating. And um, that that same concept will continue through the advanced scheduler um, when we have uh, you know uh, uh, start and stop times and and et um, suggestions etc. Let's see. Uh, the other thing to note, you can see this field over here has now has a little clock on it. That means that field is now scheduled for today. Um, and if you click on it, you can see I have a, a schedule on my Clementine's irrigation set um, of eight hours today. Does anybody have any questions on the scheduler? Okay. Um, the last things that I really wanted to cover about the application, um, we do have, thank you, Nick, appreciate that. Um, we do have available, um, uh, you're, most of you are familiar with the live, live chat in the IM desktop application. That's also available in IM web. Uh, if you can see down here on the right, right hand corner, there's the question mark. Go ahead and click on that question mark and it's going to give you all the various uh, ways of contacting PureSense. So you can use the live chat, um, you can get to our website directly, send an email to support, call our 800 number. Um, and the other thing I really wanted to highlight is the user guide. It's something we've been working really hard on um, so that it makes it easier for folks to explore uh, the application for themselves and learn more about um, our applications through a user guide. So this is a great little guide. It, um, will help you navigate your way around the application, um, understand what the various features do, um, etc. Uh, it's a it, the team has done a really great job on this. Um, 
really happy with the way this turned out. The other in, the other thing about help, if you've noticed throughout the application, there are little question mark icons. Um, so a good example of that would be in the um, in the chart itself. If you hover over any of these little question marks, it's going to give you context sensitive help about that particular feature. So if you really want to know what does scale bounds mean, go ahead and hover over it and it will give you a short summary of what that means. You can click on the more button to find out uh, more detail about it. Um, eventually I believe that's going to link to our help document that I just referenced. So those are two really great ways to, to get um, to help yourself understand the application more. You can always of course uh, contact um, your uh, account manager or uh, support person and ask questions as well. Here, the other uh, another little feature of the application, um, you have your your profile um, that is currently read only. As you can see, this is imported from my M desktop, so you you have a read only icon there. If you've got uh, if you've invited somebody else to the IM web application, they would be able to edit their their uh, profile information here. For existing IM desktop customers, they'll be doing that editing in IM desktop. Um, let me just check my notes and see if there's anything else. I think that's the gist of it uh, for now. Let me flip back to the presentation. So logging in, uh, as, as mentioned, um, your IM desktop Credentials are, are the same between I am desktop and I am web. You can go ahead and log on um, using the URL that was provided. If you don't know your password, please uh, feel free to contact us in any way, any of the contact methods you'd like. Um, so sending a mail, mail to support at pearsons.com, giving us a call, talking to your account manager, we'll be able to help you with that. Uh, this is just a little uh, information to follow up from before about um, the, the transition process between IM Desktop and IM Web. As mentioned, it's a one-way synchronization. The data is edited in IM Desktop and displayed in IM Web. Um, the goal around this was to keep the changes clear and well understood. Um, the, the underlying databases that each one of these applications use are different. We're not accessing the same database. Um, the, this, the reason we did that is to allow us to uh, really grow as a company. We were using some outdated technology before. Um, so we have to have this transition process where the data from IM Desktop is read-only. And when IM Desktop is sunsetted, when we close down that application, the edit tools will be available in, in IM Web, and that will be your, your main interface. So things that change um, from IM Desktop to IM Web here, just some examples. Your sensor boundaries, for example, um, your hover display is what you'd like to see on your hover, preferred soil moisture sensors, custom chart views, etc. And any fields or sets or anything that you want to build, you can go ahead and build that in IM Desktop and it will sync over to IM Web. Some features that are currently available only on IM Desktop, planning, water budgeting, um, those are features we will be migrating to IM Web. Um, field calendars, GDD, heat chill, water balance charts, um, all of our reports uh, will be, migra we'll be migrating over the uh, most commonly used reports uh, very quickly. Um, various other features, and they will all be, uh, we'll be migrating the useful features from IM Desktop over to IM Web uh, over the coming year. So you're all ready to go. That's that's uh, what I wanted to cover for IM Web. Um, your account managers will be account managers will be following up with you to schedule a meeting and review your account with you and help you with any transition that you need to the new software. Um, and you can always contact us with any questions or feedback. If you have a feature that you really want to see, make it from IM Desktop to IM Web sooner please let us know. Um, we're really, at this point, looking for as much feedback as we can get on this application. We'd love to hear what you've got to say. Please contact us uh, with any questions you may have. Um, we'd love to hear it. With that, uh, let's open up the mics again to see if anybody has any other questions.
Ryan? Yes. Uh, question. Um, so if I understand that correctly, if we build another field into our program, mm -hmm. then it will automatically move over to the web version? That's correct. So we can continue to build in the desktop version and then everything will be transferred? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So are the apps actually available right now, or do we have to wait for our account manager? Absolutely available right now. You can go to this URL right here. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, Apps.peersense.com. It will take you to the login page. You use your same login information that you use for IM. Uh, your data is already there. Um, so go for it. Thank you. Absolutely available to use. Ryan, one more question. Sure. Uh, that you may or may not have the answer to. Um, we are getting ready to harvest some grapes here in the next uh, day or two, mm -hmm. and we need to disconnect uh, one of our systems because we need to go over it with a harvester. Um, how does that affect, I mean, it disconnecting it and reconnecting, how does that affect is there anything in particular that we need to do, um, you know, when we bring the system back online, or how does that work? It, you generally don't. Um, if you are simply uh, dismounting the pole and and taking it out of the field, and then you 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 harvest and then put it back, there's really nothing you have to do. That unit will, if it's only down for a short period of time, it will continue running. So it'll send data that won't mean anything because it's not connected to any sensors, right? Right. Um, right. When you go ahead and put it back in the field, it's important to make sure that the cables get plugged back into the right place, clearly. Um, right. But that should immediately start reporting again because that site will, it, it's got a battery, large battery in it. It can run for you know three or four weeks without being uh, charged by the solar panel. Um, so when you put it back in the field, it should just come right back up. Um, okay. I know we have some procedures around doing this, so you may want to call uh, contact support or your account manager um, before you proceed, just to make sure everything's being done, you know, the way the way we recommend. Right, right, right. Okay. Any other questions? Not yet. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you very much for attending. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your, uh, I know, very busy schedules, especially at this time of year. Um, and again, if you have any comments, feedback, uh, suggestions uh, for the application, especially features that you want to see move from imdesk.imweb, please uh, contact your account manager, contact support, um, in any of the ways possible. They can all help take that feedback and, and get it over to us so we can uh, make the application as, uh, as great for you as we can.